In this video, I'm gonna show you how I took this animation and animated every frame in a different style. Thank you to Acer who have gone and sponsored this video. They sent me out the Concept D7 Pro before the launch so I could try it out and animate something interesting. I decided to create one animation in 12 different styles and along the way, try some new software and materials. I was very much inspired by this recent project by Buck Sydney, who made this animation with each of their staff designing one frame. The base animation was done by the phenomenal cell animator Will Peach, and the whole project was a farewell gift to the amazing Manu Soto, who has now returned to Argentina and has gone freelance. I figured that this format would be a great way to experiment with new techniques without having the pressure of having to figure out how to animate the whole thing. I started by animating this character frame by frame. Ever a fan of bouncing characters, I chose an orange because I figured that design would be simple enough that it wouldn't be too much of a headache when I had to create it in 3D. Spoilers, it, it almost broke me. Now this animation is 12 frames long, so I'm assigning each one a different style and I'm gonna work on them individually with just the outline for reference and this color palette. Frame zero, zero, and we are starting with zero. And the style for this is a 2D gradient. And this one was the easiest. So I could just get a quick win off the start. I made this with just basic shapes in Illustrator. Frame 01 was texture in After Effects. I took some scanned in images of ink and paint and placed them over certain elements of the design using alpha mats. I adjusted their brightness and contrast with the curves effect and used blending modes like screen to multiply so the textures applied to the layers underneath. I spent most of my days inside After Effects, very often with a lot of texture layers and a lot of effects. So a powerful CPU and lots of RAM are very necessary to work quickly and effectively. Inside the Concept D7 Pro, I've got the latest gen CPU, 32 gigabytes of RAM and a two terabyte solid state drive. So it makes After Effects run and render incredibly fast. Frame two was Quill. Now I'm very curious about creating in VR. So I decided to tackle one frame using Quill, which was the new software to me. And it was a surprisingly intuitive way to sculpt. This is a breeze to what's coming up. And the Concept D7 Pro had no problem running any of the VR software I put it through. Frame 03 was in Photoshop using grain. And I shaded this one using one of my custom made grain brushes, which you can download for free down in the description. And I use this technique a lot to make a design feel a bit rougher and add texture to an image. This is sort of my go-to technique to make a flat design more interesting. And no matter how many layers I put into this file or increase the resolution, the Concept D7 Pro had no issues. It's been a great fit to my design workflow. Frame 04 was making it in a flat style with a stroke, like a 2D cartoon. I just made it illustrated with a pen tool. And frame 05, Blender. This one was by far the hardest. In fairness though, this was the first thing I've ever made in Blender or really in 3D properly. I have made an untextured donut before, but that's it. And it took twice as much time for me to create this one frame as it did for all of the others combined. Modeling the eyes took me ages. I just didn't know how to go about making the shapes that I wanted in my head. So I just ended up using cylinders, subdividing them and just pulling the vertices until it felt good enough. And I'm sure anyone who's used Blender for a while is chuckling to themselves because it could be made in 10 minutes or so, but it couldn't for me, not yet. And I should have learned a lot more about the basics before extending myself onto this project. It was definitely me trying to crawl before I could slither. I modeled the leaf using the sculpting tools, which I found so much more intuitive and it does look a bit wonky, but it's my leaf and I love it. So please give this video a like for the leaf and for just how much I struggled making this orange. But after the modeling was done, the texturing and rendering was a breeze. And that's where I was really grateful to have the GPU that I did in the Concept D7 Pro. It comes with a choice between an NVIDIA GeForce RTX or Quadro RTX graphics. I'm using the Quadro GPU and this is a huge help when working in 3D assets and animation. And I've been very cautious to use 3D in the past just because of how hardware intensive and slow rendering was on my old machine every time I tried it. Okay, now we're halfway through the frames. Frame six I did with colored pencils and I haven't used colored pencils in years. So this was one of the most fun. I even bought the exact same pack that I had when I was 10 for some extra nostalgia. And I can verify they still smell the exact same as they did 20 years later. In frame seven, I was using Photoshop with a glow gradient style. And I love designing with really glowy gradients in Photoshop, just using a big soft round brush. And I just love how easy it makes sort of describing the form of your object by just adding extra lighting and shadows. 
and I've got a full video about that technique as well. So you should check that out if you're interested. And the way this one ended up was one of my favorites of the whole piece. Frame paint was plasticine. And for the plasticine, I mainly just tore off the orange pieces and smushed them together over the base line work and tried to get some nice fingerprint texture in there too. Glenn Morales did a plasticine frame in that buck animation. So I have to admit that I got the idea from him and also I wanted to play with plasticine as well. Frame nine was in a digital painting sort of concept art style. I really enjoy digital painting. That's where I started when I first made digital art at uni as soon as I got my first tablet. And this was before I ever scanned in a texture or used a grain brush. And I find it just very relaxing to draw everything on a single layer and not have to worry about separating it for animation. And lately I've been looking for excuses to include it in more projects. Frame 10 was using patterns in Illustrator. Again, this was a simpler one. I won't go more into this. Frame 11 was using acrylic paints. I love painting with acrylics. And I thought I'd show off my collection of brushes that I used back when I was painting a lot more and that I customized so many of these to just have the perfect width for strokes in my paintings. And also this was great to document evidence that my miniature paints are a genuine business expense. Now that every frame was done, I had to make sure that the colors were all consistent, especially on the blender, the pencil, the paint, and the plasticine frames. Because I wasn't able to just eye drop from my color palette, I was restricted by my materials. And this is where it's great to have an accurate color display. And the Concept D7 Pro screen is incredibly color accurate. It's Pantone validated, has a 100% Adobe RGB color gamut, and a Delta E of less than two. And to be honest, I wasn't quite sure what a Delta E meant, but I have been assured that less than two means it's very good. The screen is also gloriously matte and 4K, which is essential for me because I sometimes like to have a lot of windows open in After Effects and it can get a bit crowded. After every frame was color matched, I imported them all into After Effects to see them in motion. I'm really happy with how this came out. It's still really clear that it's an enthusiastic bouncing orange, and there's a really interesting texture across the motion as the style changes and boils, at least I feel. So let me know in the comments which style or which frame is your favorite. And thanks again to Acer for the Concept D7 Pro. I had so much fun using this machine. I would not have been able to get through the 3D frames with my sanity intact if I couldn't preview and render them as fast as I did. If you'd like to learn animation and motion design techniques, I've got a playlist of some of the best tutorials on this channel for you to take a look at. I'll see you in the next one.